The Snow Queen. That says it is in seven parts. So, part the first. Which treats of the mirror and its fragments? Listen, we are beginning our story. When we arrive at the end of it, we shall, it is so to be hoped, know more than we do now. There once was a magician, a wicked magician, a most wicked magician. Great was his delight at having constructed a mirror possessing this peculiarity. Vision. That almost that everything good and beautiful, when reflected in it, shrank up to almost nothing. Whilst those things that were ugly and useless were magnified and made to appear ten times worse than before. The loveliest landscapes reflected the mirror looked like boiled spinach. And the handsomest persons appeared odious, or as if standing upon their heads, their features being so distorted that their friends could never have recognized them. Moreover, if one of them had a freckle, he might be sure that it would seem to spread over his nose and mouth. And if a good or pious thought glanced across his mind, a wrinkle was seen in the mirror. All this magician thought highly entertaining. Well, I kind of do too. And he chuckled with delight at his own clever invention, as one does. Those who frequented the school of magic where he taught spread abroad the fame of his wonderful mirror. <clears throat> and declared that by its means the world and its inhabitants might be seen now for the first time as they really were. And they carried the mirror from place to place till at last there was no country nor person that had not been represented by it. Its, admir its admirers now must needs fly up to the sky with it to see if they could carry on their sport even there. But the higher they flew, the more wrinkled did the mirror become. They could scarcely hold it together. They flew on and on, higher and higher, till at last the mirror trembled so fearfully that it escaped from their hands and fell to earth, breaking into millions Billions and trillions of pieces. And then it caused far greater unhappiness than before. For fragments of it, scarcely so large as a grain of sand, would be flying about in the air and sometimes get into people's eyes, causing them to view everything in the wrong way. Or have eyes only for what was perverted and corrupt, each little fragment having retained the peculiar properties of the entire mirror. I'm not early. I'm not early, I'm not late. I'm exactly what I mean to be. <laughs> Some people were so unfortunate as to receive a little splinter into their hearts. That was terrible. A heart became cold and hard like a lump of ice. Some pieces were large enough to be used as window panes, but it was of no use to look at one's friends through such panes as those. Other fragments were made into spectacles, and then what trouble people had with setting and resetting them. The wicked magician was greatly amused with all of this, and he laughed till his sides ached. There are still some little splinters of this mischievous mirror flying about in the air. We shall hear more about them very soon.